we're in Microsoft Fabric Workspace today. And whether it's your first time or you need a refresher, today we're going to deploy a data flow Gen 2 to get and transform data on today's Tales from the Field. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. If this is your first time finding us on Tales from Field, give us a like and give us that subscribe. For those new subscribers, settle into that favorite recliner and get comfy. And to all those little subscribers and those returning subscribers that hit that like button, watch our content and provide us comments. Thank you so much. Keep it coming, folks. Speaking of content, we drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays, we have the Community Roundtable where we share blogs, videos, things that are inspired us that we found during the week put together by you, the MVPs of the Azure Data Community. And then on Mondays and Wednesdays, we have this thing we like to call MS Tech Bits, where we put together videos on some of these blogs or things that inspired us during the week, or maybe an issue we hit with a client during the week. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. All right, here we go together. We're going to create and publish our first Dataflow Gen 2 within our Microsoft Fabric Workspace. All right, let's go to Jataflow Gen 2 under new. Let's select that. It's going to take us here into our Power Query. First thing we need to do is we need to get data. We're going to select data. I want to view more here real quick. I want to scroll through all of these data sources. Let me just scroll down here. You can see there's Azure SQL Database, Azure Databricks, HD Insight, Oh, so many, so many choices here for sources. We have blank query. Let's scroll back up. The one I want to use today is I want to select O data. We're going to type that in there to filter by it. I'm going to select O data. Here it's going to take us to our connection string. For our connection string, I am going to paste in here what I'm going to show on the screen. This is also in the document that I will be sharing in the description of the video. So if you don't get it here, don't worry, this connection string is also going to be within the quick start that this video is inspired upon. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Once I click Next, it's going to go through a process. It's going to create our connection string to our data source. Now that we have our connection string set up, we need to choose the data we want. So let's choose two tables in this case. In this case, I'm going to choose orders and I'm going to choose customers. You can see there that I have both of them selected. It's going to do a preview on the screen here. It's going to show us some of the data that we are going to be consuming. We are going to go ahead and we are going to select create, which takes us to the next step of our data flow, the transformations. Here on view, we want to be on view. You want to make sure that our diagram view and that we have that enabled. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to our home there above our ribbon and select options. We want to make sure that our data profiling tools are enabled. So we want to ensure that under options, we check the appropriate boxes. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Underneath steps, you can see that I have show script in step call out. Also, I'm selecting every checkbox underneath column profile. After selecting OK, it's going to take us back to our customers and orders table. So we want to do something with our data. We want to transform it. So let's find the total number of orders per our customer. How can we do that? Well, we can do that easily with the group by transformation. So we're going to go up here. We're going to select our orders table. Once we've selected our orders table, next thing we're going to do in the profiler down here, the data profiler, we're going to want to select customer ID with customer ID. Up above the ribbon here, we're going to want to select transform. Within the transform ribbon, we have the group by. Let's select group by. Here in our group by transformation, we're going to group by customer ID. We're going to leave the column name as count. And for our operation, we're going to count rows. This group by transformation will provide us the count of the number of times our customer ID appears in our order table, in our orders table. All right, so we want to merge our customer's data with our orders data. So let's go up to our customer's table. We're going to select on the Actions button. 
and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here. We're not going to do merge queries. I made that mistake the first time I ran this. We're going to do merge queries as new. So let's go ahead and select that. And you can see it provides us a merge screen. On the merge screen, we're merge transformation, shall I say. We're going to select our customer's table for the left table. We're going to select customer ID. For our right table, we are going to select orders. We're going to select customer ID there as well. We're going to do a left outer join on these tables. And we're going to go ahead and select OK. This is going to create our merge transformation for us. There we go. We've done a group by transformation. We've done a merge transformation. However, joining the customer's table and the orders table by customer ID has just returned too many rows. So I want to narrow this down. So we're going to go all the way to the bottom right hand side of the screen. We are going to show schema view on our show schema view. We're going to select customer ID and then we're going to select company name. And then I'm going to scroll down and I want to look at the number of orders. So I'm going to choose orders two because that's the one we created inside our transformation. Once I choose those, I'm going to go ahead and then choose schema tools. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to remove other columns. All right, that removed all the columns that I did not select. Now I'm going to go back to my show data view. Once I go back to my show data view, as I have some more transformations or cleanup of the data I want to do. All right. Due to the merging of our data, our orders two has nested information. So we need to expand that out. So I'm going to click on the expand button there and I'm only going to select count. I'm only interested in the count data from this particular column. All right, there's one more transformation we need to do to make this query complete. Let's rank our data. So let's select the count column. Then we're going to go up top above the ribbon here, add column, and then we're going to select rank column transformation. We're going to rank by our count and we're going to do it from values high to low. And there we have it. The final transformation is complete. And we can say that Save a Lot Markets has the highest number of orders within our data. Under Query Settings, let's call our query Rank Customers. Now let's select the data destination. I'm going to send this to a lake house. So I can hit the plus sign there under Data Destination. I'm going to go ahead and select Lake House. I'm going to choose an existing Lake House connection I have within my workspace. I'm going to click Next. It's going to load the different Lake Houses I have available for my destination target for my new table. I'm going to select my shortcut exercise lake house. I'm going to select next. I'm going to replace this table each time it runs with the four columns that are identified in my query. I'm going to go ahead and hit my saving. I'm going to go ahead and save my settings, but we want to make sure that we publish our efforts. I'm going to go ahead and hit publish on the lower right hand side of the screen. Once that's complete, our data flow will show up here. Now I want to go and I want to set up a schedule so we can scroll down here and I can set on for a refresh schedule. I'm going to run this daily at 4 a.m. on UTC time. Setting this schedule up ensures that our rank customer table sitting out in our lake house is refreshed every morning at 4 a.m. All right, folks, let's celebrate together because we did something special. We created our first Dataflow Gen 2 within our Microsoft workspace. We did some transformations. We did some group buys. We did some ranks. We also did some merges. After we did that, we sent our data to a lake house so that people could examine that data. And we set up a schedule to refresh every day at 4 a.m. You know where we like to keep this going in the comments down below. And as always, be good to each oh, other. Set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do the aftermath of preparation. 